Um, ladies and gentlemen, could I first thank you for asking me to come here today? And I fear I may not be worthy of the task, but I will do my best to speak for myself and for those from the constituents that I represent called East Belfast. Yeah. Who I think there's a few here today. Before beginning, I have a couple of things that have been asked to say, and my memory's not what it once was, so I'll say them first. I want to pay recognition and say thank you to Vanguard Bears for the substantial amount of money that they have provided to the cabin over these last few weeks. I would also like to say, and this is going to sound a bit strange for me coming from Bob and Carrots, how pleased I was to see Pride of Ardoin here today. Um, there are two very loyal supporters of Pride of Ardoin. I'm not sure if they're out in the crowd somewhere, but they're certainly in the railway bar in Ballygown on very frequent occasions. And I suspect that I will see them again over Christmas. Today is the year of our Lord 2013, the 21st of December. Just a couple of days from Christmas. And throughout history, there's a significance in this date for us as a people. On this day in 1620, a ship called the Mayflower, carrying the Pilgrim Fathers, made land at Plymouth Rock and gave birth to an enormous democracy, which was formulated, supported and fought for by people of our blood. Scots, Irish, Ulster, Scots, call them what you will, created the Constitution and established that democracy known as the United States of America. And a few weeks ago, a son of that democracy called Haas arrived here, arrived here, and in connivance, in connivance with others, decided that having built his country, he was going to come back and tell us how to run ours. <laughs> to license, to license us to fly our flag in our country. Ruth Patterson, I know Ruth, I can see her head bobbing there. You used to have a green berry on it, Ruth, didn't it? <laughs> the, the, the truth is, the truth is, both Ruth and I knew people who in days gone by paid for the love of that flag with their lives with their lives and to me and I don't know all that's in these proposals like many of you I can guess but from what I've heard and what I've seen and I don't want to be rude to Mr. Haas I really think I really think I really think I really think he should go home and leave us The truth is, I live in those hills on the far side of that river, and at the end of this, I can get in my car and I can go home lawfully, unimpeded, and supported. But for many of you here who live that way, some quirk of history has decreed that you can't go home, that you can't be what you are in your own country, you can't walk the streets of your own town. And for me, for me, that is wrong. Another thing happened on this date in 1948, when the Republic of Ireland was established, having turned their back on the Free State and the Commonwealth and every undertaking they had ever given. It happened in Canada during a state dinner hosted by an Ulsterman who had become Governor General of Canada. He had words with the tea shop that afternoon about Ireland's alleged neutrality during the Second World War. And during the dinner, the, the tea shop came down. A lovely table set with linen and silver and crystal. And sitting opposite his seat was a silver representation of the walls of Londonderry during the siege with Roar and Meg pointing at his seat. <laughs> He simmered, and he simmered, and he stood up and he said, Ireland will be a republic. And he left, and that was the end of it. But not here. Not here. 
because we do not wish to live in a republic. We wish to live in peace in our own land, in peace with those who will live in peace with us. But let me say this, we will live under no one. It's not in our nature. It's not in our nature. We're a thrown, argumentative, divisive people among ourselves, never mind with our enemies. But once, once there was a time when we stood, and with us stood what was then the empire and the other citizens of this United Kingdom. In truth, we don't need another flag. We don't want another flag. It was our history is written in the flag that we have. I stand, honestly, very humbled in the company of people who on a cold, wet December day cling to the old things, to those things which were right then and are right now, to, as has been said, civil and religious liberty, to the right to be what you are, and the right and the demand that you are courteous to others. I preach no party politics, I preach no rebellion, I preach no religion, I stand here on the borders of the United Kingdom, at the edge of the Union and a chasm between law and justice, and for the life of me, I don't know what brought us here. We again must begin to think, to act, and to put our case properly because our cause is good, our case is good, and yet we bite our own tail. The truth is, the world's playing chess, and we are playing drafts. And in that game, if we keep it up, we will lose. And there is too much that is valuable, and too much that is decent, and too much that is honest in our history for us to fail those who went before. I want to seriously wish you all in your homes a happy and a Merry Christmas and come back in the new year more determined, more resolute and more sure of where we all wish to go. A very Merry Christmas. To all